Okay, so I want to thank everybody for joining. We've got a lot of people on today, 73 people logged in. Uh, so this is obviously a very um, a topic of high interest to everybody in the state. Um, so with that, I think I will turn it over to the Entrado uh, ECATS team and um, let you guys take it from here. Perfect. All right, I'm going to try and share my screen and get the slides up. And let me know if you can see the title page, the ECATS page. Yes, we can see it. OK, great. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Um, as uh, Daryl mentioned, uh, my name is Jennifer Spadafora, Velez Spadafora. Um, I am the account manager here on the ECATS team. Uh, also, whom we have on the call um, is my sales director, Tiffany Chambers, who you all are, are probably familiar with. Um, she's been here quite a bit longer than I have, so she knows all the ins and outs and the intricacies um, of ECATS as it pertains to this project. Um, and then we also have Derek Alvarez, who is my technical resource, because um, I do not pretend to be technical, although I do my best. Um, but we do have Derek on to assist with any um, question, technical questions that we may have. Um, because we have such a large audience, I am going to um, walk through the slides. Um, and then at the end, if we could then do our, um, our questions. Um, I, don't I, don't, I don't know how you typically do these in the past, but it might be easier to do all the questions at the end um, so that you can open up the floor to them. Um, and so once we're completed with the slides, um, and then uh, of course if time permits, I'd like to go into a live demo just to give you a little um, a view so you can see the lay of the land um, of what you're actually going to be using. Um, all of the slides are, are very intuitive and are gonna give you plenty of detail, but there's something to be said about actually logging in and seeing what a day in the life of actually using it um, will look like for you. So um, I'll be covering over um, the history of ECATS, our current national footprint, um, and then the solution overview as it pertains to what is being proposed on the next tariff, um, and uh, some information on some key business drivers, how you would want to use ECATS, and then again into the live demo. So, uh, well, first off, um, ECATS, uh, we've been around quite a bit. Um, ECATS is, is I believe, if not the first, one of the first analytics providers for call data reporting um, that pulls directly from your call handling equipment, uh, your CPE, um, been around since 1997. So um, this was originally custom built for the state of California. They actually came to us um, back then and said, this is what we're looking for. This is what we need. Um, and we're talking about your directors, your supervisors, your managers, so um, the platform was actually built from actual people using this um, so that we made, we, and we were glad and thankful for that because that allowed us to build this out in the most useful way possible to the people who are actually using it. Fast forward uh, to 2022, and we are now currently monitoring, managing, and reporting data for well over 3,100 PSOPs across the United States. Um, and in that time, you can imagine we've developed and built strong strategic alliances with telecommunication providers as well as our CPE service providers. Um, one of the wonderful things about ECATS is the CPE agnostic nature of our platform. So it doesn't matter who you're using um, today. If you're using Intrato Viper, Motorola Vesta, Solcom, uh, Zetron, um, on, and on and on. Um, so you're not locked into any one particular call handling equipment. With our um, deployments, I uh, wanted to showcase some of what we have today. Um, what you're seeing in the purple, those are some of our statewide deployments that we are um, already active in today. Um, down on the right-hand side are our countywide deployments. Um, included in there, um, we list them as state of Texas, state of Florida, state of Kentucky. Um, but in a lot of those um, deployment states, I would say we're deployed well over 75% of the state. Um, Texas alone, we are pretty heavily imprinted there. Um, same to be said in Maryland, <clears throat> in Tennessee, DC. Um, so um, we are trusted. We are the trusted provider for reporting and analytic solutions um, across the board. 
Um, and then um, for information's sake, um, we are deployed in um, many EZNet deployments across the country. Uh, those are mentioned down below, um, as you can see in the light blue. So what is ECATS? You're probably wondering what I'm even talking about. So ECATS stands for Emergency Call Tracking 911 System. Um, and what it is is a reporting system um, that you're going to access through a secure internet-based website. Um, it's a true enterprise MIS application that's going to give you the ability to report on PSAP individually on the county level, statewide level, or any jur size jurisdiction with the same level of simplicity. Um, when we get into the actual portal, you'll see it's just a matter of a couple clicks and you'll be able to see information for a single site at a given hour all the way up to historical data across multiple uh, jurisdictions um, based on your role access, of course. Um, we are an intuitive one-click reporting platform. Um, and again, with that click, those simple clicks, you can easily get your call and trunk statistics, all of your CDR and alley information. Um, again, we pull from your call handling equipment. So any data that's available in that call detail record we're able to export and parse out into a nice pretty report for you to review and make your decisions based off of. Um, it, uh, one of, uh, something we boast is our hassle-free and low maintenance. Um, you're, with, your, with purchasing ECAPS, you're actually purchasing a service. You're not purchasing uh, an actual software or anything of that nature. You're going to be receiving the full team of customer care support group analysts They'll help you building reports. They'll help you, you know, if you're stuck with anything, um, they'll help identify any anomalies with you. So it's almost like an extension of your um, center when you are utilizing ECATS. Um, no servers or expensive equipment at the PSAP. Um, and as I mentioned, role-based accessibility via that internet browser. Uh, this is important because someone on a director level will want to see different reports than a call taker is going to be seeing or versus a regional person. So we base all of the logins on accessibility on and what access we want to grant to that person. Um, so the MIS, the Enterprise MIS Reporting Solution, um, we are a single system to collect, manage, and report, unified reporting, uh, Managed services, again, this is not an MIS as a service SaaS model. You're, you're getting the full team, um, myself included, you know, anytime you need assistance with anything, it's not unheard of that we'll have people reach out to our uh, CCS group and say, I need to know X, Y, Z, and I don't know how to find it. Help. So we're more than happy to assist you with that as well. Um, and then one of the great things about ECAS is that we are fully customizable. So we have these standard reports that are included with the MIS reporting package. In addition to that, we do have customizable, customized reports that we've built over the years um, that are available to you. Um, in addition to that, you, you've got the ability to customize your own views on your reports utilizing our ad hoc tool, um, which is a, a huge I say a huge component to finding exactly the data that you're needing without any unnecessary additional data. Um, and also, um, last thing I'd like to mention to it is that you you have the ability to share your reports, anything that you've built. Um, our trouble ticket management system, if you do have trouble tickets, you're able to see what's going on with your the status of your ticket. Um, and then the data repository, which um, just based on the feedback I've heard from so many of our customers, is huge. Um, if you're needing to run a report dating back to five years ago, you're able to pull all that information because from the time that ECATS gets connected, we, we have all that information saved as a re repository. So if in 2030, you want to investigate or a judge calls for a subpoena of records on an event that happened on July 15th, 2024, just type in your dates and you should be able to pull that information fairly quickly. Um, and again, just with a few clicks. So this is what our standard um, ECATS interface is going to look like. Uh, this is a screenshot from an actual login user um, for our portal. 
Um, and as you see here, you're able to securely capture all of the call and text data via this single reporting portal. Um, what is being proposed in the tariff is our MIS, enterprise MIS suite, as well as our text. Um, so I would like to go into the MIS portion of things first, um, as what you're seeing on here. So um, with this interface, you're able to seamlessly report. And again, regardless, it's kind of a broken record, but we do report re on the calls regardless of the call handling equipment. Um, and I will get into the live demo and show you, but uh, just a run through here, starting from top to bottom, you've got your options up here of reports. Um, the first button here is what you're seeing under your standard reports. Then you've got your ad hoc option and then access to the raw data. If there was ever a need for you needing to see all of the information as it spills in, not output it into a report, you're able to get to see that right there uh, with the raw data. Then moving down into this black bar right below, uh, you've got access to the reporting again. And um, again, this is all user-based. So what you're seeing here on my screen may not be what you see in your own login. Uh, this is an admin login, so it's gonna show all of the information that is available. Um, including your admin, your dashboard, uh, release notes, and another admin section. Uh, the release notes and support will actually will be there regardless of your login um, to allow you to request support directly from the portal. And this is where we update all of our release notes as they become available. So what you're seeing here on the left-hand side, this is the full list of reports included in the MIS suite. Uh, everything from call summary, to your circuit utilization, your class of service, your agent ring time, agent speed of answer, um, top ANI reports. Um, it's got a wealth of knowledge already included here in the standard reports. So the way that this would work is you would click on the report that you're looking to run. You would select the PSOPs that are available. Um, and again, this is a screenshot from a, a demo login. So yours would be specific to your jurisdiction. Um, any groups that you may have had set up, if you are a multiple PSAP jurisdiction and you've got three or four that uh, you want to run a report, we can set up a group so you can just click that one button rather than clicking each individual PSAP here. Um, and then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to select your date range, select your period group, your calls types, um, and go through all these filters of what you want to see. Um, and then generate that report straight here, and that will open up the next window with all of your report data. Um, normally, this is where I would stop and ask for questions, but I know we did say we'll, we'll wait to the end. So um, moving on to the next slide, this is a, a recap of all of the reports that um, are included in the MIS suite. Um, what you're seeing on the right-hand side are some example reports of what it's going to look like once you've ran those reports. Um, and then on this full list of pre-configured reports, um, the ones that we have down here in blue, those are actually some newly added reports. Uh, periodically, as a report is built out new, um, over time, we'll release that to everybody and all of our customers. So these three here are actually the most three recently uh, newly added reports to the standard MIS report platform. Okay, sorry, I had to take a drink of water there. Now, um, this next slide here, uh, I wanna talk about the management reports. As I mentioned earlier, all of the user logins are role-based. So as a manager, I'm going to have access to some of these reports that a standard user would not have access to. Included in those management reports are some reports that are more pertinent to um, the functionality of the PSAP, making sure that your trunks are being utilized in the appropriate manner, um, and some managerial reports so that you can get a, a, a quick view of how you're doing, how your jurisdiction is doing as a whole, um, including your answer time exceptions, your ring time except, exceptions, uh, have, we have those set up for both 10 seconds and 15 seconds. Um, and then your monthly management reports, which include the wireless call sector, which is going to identify the calls based on the call tower, cellular phone tower, um, your emergency number summary, your outage reports, 
So again, these are kind of the reports that the everyday user wouldn't necessarily be concerned with, but as a manager, it's quite helpful in understanding the health um, and the status of your center. And um, finally, you're also going to get a day in review email. So what the day in review email is, is a summary of the previous day. It's going to give you these high top level metrics. Um, and all of this information is actually going to be emailed to you. Um, the benefit to that is you're coming into your shift or however, whatever your day or evening starts, and you don't know what you're walking into. So we thought it was important to have a way to give um, almost like passing the baton and providing a summary of what happened previously. So before you even get to the center, log in, do any of your you know initial things, you can check this email on your phone, on your tablet, um, even at home before you left your house, just to see how things were going, um, the shift prior to you walking in. So again, it's, it's all about understanding how your PSAP is functioning, making sure that you're getting those calls answered within the SLAs that you've set for yourself, making sure that emergencies are handled in an appropriate manner, um, and ultimately the end goal, which, um, you know, of course we can't forget, is to help the public and make sure that we're getting to them as efficiently as possible. Um, and I, I always like to mention, you know, if you're not checking these things and you're not making sure that this has happened, this is somebody's grandmother or granddaughter or mother or father or brother that could be on the other end that um, this would directly affect. So all of this is really great information. And I think everybody sees the value in it just from, you know, using it themselves. So really excited that you all are um, soon to be a part of the ECATS family. And okay, so uh, the final piece to the MIS module that I did want to speak on is our ad hoc mapping report. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is something that is available to you so that you can build out a report specific to the information that you're looking. So when you go in there, as you can see here, you've got a list of fields that you can select. Um, and if you were looking for something specific, you're able to type that in there in that field as well. You would um, check off the filters to all of the information that you want to output on that report. We have this available to you in standard editor, which you're seeing here on the left, as well as our advanced editor, which you're seeing on the right, um, has quite a few more available fields. Um, it's available in this drop down here. Um, one of the um, more recent uh, features that we just rolled out to all of our customers um, is our ad hoc mapping tool. And I, I have that here, you can see with the red arrows on both reports. So we recently added the output to the map. Um, and I will show this in the live demo. This is actually really neat to see. Um, and basically you can run the report setting up all of those fields that you pre-selected. And now you can actually visualize that on a map. And when you visualize it on, the ma on a map, you're able to see call storming, call clusters, or you know, any types of visual anomalies that you would normally not have noticed. And then you're able to actually draw around it and draw a circle around a cluster, draw a freeform box around that cluster, and it will output the data only in the section that you drew on the map. Um, and the map is intuitive, so you can move, uh, you know, drag it and move it up and down your state, your city, your county. Um, and we're really, really excited to finally get this rolled out. Uh, we just released the, the, the notice to our customers within the last month. I know a lot of people have been reaching out wanting to get more information on it. Um, but again, as I said, with our CCS team, you do get unlimited training. So anytime there's a new rollout or you just need some help or you want to refresh your training, that's available to you at no additional charge. It's already bundled into the price unlimited times uh, remotely through webinar. Quick water break here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. All righty. So um, well, everything that I've just covered so far is our standard MIS reporting module. Um, in addition to the MIS reporting module, um, we are going to be including the text to 911 suite. <clears throat> Just one second, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so for the text to 911 module, um, as you can see on the, the screenshot here, 
I've now drawn attention to the third bar down that says text 911 report. That is where you're going to access the suite of reports available for all of your text conversations. Um, not to be confused with your TTY co uh, conversations, which are included with the standard MIS report. So the way that our text to 911 report is a little bit different is that we are actually collecting and reporting data directly from the text control center. Uh, we are the sole text to 911 reporting solution for both Intrato and Comtex TCCs. So what that means for you is an especially easy deployment. We already have access to the data. It's just a matter of configuring, training, and setting you up. And we're able to get all that information straight from the text control center. So we're able to even get the transcripts of what was going, what was being communicated, communicated throughout that session. Um, currently today, we are offering 12 reports specific to SMS. Um, and again, agnostic to all of your customer premise equipment. Um, and our, and I, again, I want to point out that our reports are fully customizable to meet the needs and specific efficiencies of the PSAP. So uh, this is a, a, a very high level view again of the reports, but you're going to have everything included from set sessions per hour to your average session dur duration, the session transcript, which is extremely beneficial so that you can audit and see what's going on in those transcripts. Um, it's going to identify multiple sessions from the same mobile device number, um, attempts messages per hour, your transfers that you've made through text, averages messages per session, um, and an overall text summary. Um, the way that you're going to be running the, re the report is very similar to the MIS report. Uh, we've kept it very intuitive, very user-friendly. All you're going to do is update your PSAP that you're wanting to check, select your date range if you want to view that in a month versus a year versus a day, um, your call types, if you only wanted 911, if you wanted to see your admin as well as your 911, that is an available option. Um, your NSI filters, um, you have the ability to export this into a graph form, which I know is very, is pretty important to a lot of centers to be able to visualize that information and see it, you're trending over time. Um, and then you have the ability to run that report um, and of course, this goes to all of our, for all of our reports. You can output via web, um, via a, it'll, it'll open up a next tab in your browser, or you can out, uh, output through Excel as well as PDF. You have multiple ways to view the reports. I know some people like to play around with their data, so it's helpful to have it in Excel form so that you can move things around and add, apply your formulas. Um, the web the web output is good if you just want to see quickly what you know some numbers that you need to document, um, and then the PDF version is extremely helpful when again if a a, a judge orders um, needing to see records you'll be able to output that in PDF so that it can't be edited. Okay, so um, we're we're coming up to the end of you hearing me rambling on my slides, and then we can get into the exciting fun part where we're actually into the demo. Um, I do want to close out with um, some of the um, key reporting benefits. Um, of course, everybody understands the value of reporting uh, today. Just again, making sure that your PSAP is operating as efficient efficiently as possible. But these are some of the reasons why um, we think ECAT specifically is better for you in getting access to that information. Um, again, it's a universal reporting solution. You're going to have uniformity in the data collection across the board. And since you're not doing things manually, there is no more human error. Um, the human error is limited to you selecting the wrong date or something. But the data that is outputted is foolproof, essentially. Um, you're going to have complete end-to-end -end reporting. Um, we do have additional features available um, for, for the ECATS module. Um, of course, apart from the tariff, more than happy to get into that at a later date. Um, your ability, you have the ability to trace calls as they're transferred from one piece app to another. Now, this is huge, um, especially with a statewide offering. So with the statewide offering, and this is a good reason, a big reason why we've done so, you know, so many state, other states have utilized ECATS is if you are an ECATS customer, we can track 
all of those transferred calls from PSAP to PSAP, no matter where it goes. So if it starts off at one location, gets sent to a second location, that location sends it back to the primary, that primary sends it out to fire, fire sends it back to share, it can go on and on and on. Um, so you're able to run a report and see everywhere that that call went. Um, and again, to make sure it doesn't happen too often and make sure you're not transferring inadvertently um, and, you know, making sure that calls are being answered as efficiently and timely as possible. Um, you can identify any misdirected wireless calls. Um, you have the ability to monitor and rank your overall 911 answer time performance. I've heard of some PSAPs even working with neighboring PSAPs and setting up contests, you know, to keep it exciting for the call takers, you know, make sure that they see who can answer calls and within a certain percentage or whatever game you want to set up. But um, it, it keeps it fun and exciting for the call takers as well, in addition to the benefits to, you know, the admin level and, and the, the actual person dialing level. Um, again, to recap, we are fully customizable. I don't know of any other company or provider that does that. So you've got you've got the Cadillac of, of reporting suites. And so your abil you have the ability to tailor your reports specific to the SLAs in the state of Colorado, both at the PSAP and statewide. Um, and in, in closing, my final slide here uh, to recap that data repository, you're going to have one reporting system. You'll be able to reference back as far as the date that we started collecting data, which would be huge for you in the future. I, I know I don't know how many PSAPs are still collecting actual papers and filing cabinets. Hopefully not too many, but the goal is to have all of that done electronically. Um, you have the ability to easily monitor and report on any legislative and FCC request, requests, again, within the same amount of time, seconds, minutes that it takes to run the report. Um, you're able to compare PSATs of your size and not of your size even, just to get an objective assessment of your overall performance, um, ability to render reports across all types of call handling equipment. Um, and again, we, we drive this home, uh, you're probably saying, we get it, Jennifer, we heard you say that, but we, we do drive it home and repeat it quite often, um, especially with these statewide um, deployments, because it's not uncommon for everybody to have different, different operating equipment. So um, this is huge. At least you know you're not locked in and say, well, I've got, I don't know, Motorola Vesta today. Does, now I have to stick with them for the whole time. Otherwise, I can't use my reporting. Um, so the answer to that is no, you're not locked into, you're able to move as times move as your decision making change, idea, uh, reasons change, um, and we are pretty flexible to work with you on that. Um, and then the huge, uh, I think for reporting in general, you're going to be able to make your decisions driven by data. Um, there's something to be said about saying, well, I need funding and I need to request a grant or I need more positions even in my site. All of those things are great requests, but how are you going to quantify and actually prove that you need the, you have a need? Um, so with the reporting suite, you're able to make those decisions on your budgets, your staffing, um, your own SLAs, your overall performance, um, as well as identify trends, um, and all based on actual true factual data. Um, not just, well, I think we're busy on Tuesdays. Now you can actually run a report and see which day of the week you are busiest. Um, so that's, um, that's all I've got uh, so far there. Um, and so I, I, would, I don't know if this is possible, Daryl, but um, before I move into the live portal, can we open up the floor for any questions? Sure. Uh, we do have 74 people on right now. So if anybody has a question, please raise your hand. Uh, there's a little hand icon at the bottom center of your screen. Uh, Bill Duggan, Fremont County. You know, is this the same system that's in place in Kansas? We are deployed in Kansas. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. I just, that's what I've used before. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm, are you, you might be the person I met just recently at the APCO conference. And I know I spoke to a couple people from Colorado who said that they were uh, looking forward to moving over to ECAPS. I think it was somebody from Kansas as well, as a matter of fact. I, I spoke to someone at the booth, yes. 
Okay, that was probably me then. So, um, yes, to confirm, this is what we are, um, we have deployed currently in Kansas. Great. Um, I see Jackie was next, I think. Jackie Louise. Okay, let's skip Jackie. Uh, Jennifer. Good morning. So the I understand that um, you can track by uh, user, and I saw the reports that you can do um, answer time by agent. So would the admin at each agency be able to manage their employees, or is that something that ECATS would have to do? Um, no, so everything just, at, well, thank you for your question, actually, first. Um, but you had it right the first round. So you are completely self-sufficient. This is all going to be available to you. You're going to be managing your PSAP according to how you want. These reports are going to be available to your login. Um, I did mention that we have the CCS group here to help you out if the need arises. But if you're good on your own and you don't have any questions for us, you don't have to pull us in at all. Um, you're able to run the reports at your leisure um, and set up everything according to the data. Um, you'll have your own login and be able to manage all of that information on your, on your own. Um, we do not give out any advice on how to run your piece app. Um, you as a government um, body have your own rules for that. So we don't try to overstep. Um, we are just here to supply the uh, data to you and enable you to make decisions um, based on the data that you have. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I saw some questions here in the chat box. Um, oh, sorry, I was talking away on mute myself. Um, oh, Jack, okay. Did you have a question? You had your hand up and then it was lowered. Okay. Daryl, she asked her question in the chat. Oh, okay. There's a bunch of questions in the chat. Um, so Jackie uh, Louise asked, if we currently have, well, let's go back up. So Cody asks, is this meant to replace the current state level in Trotto 911 reporting? And my understanding is it is replacing it, or or maybe you can t somebody can tell me if that old, if that in Trotto Insights reporting will still be available if people want to see that. Yeah, so um, yes, this is to replace the current reporting. Um, and if you currently have ECATS or moving, are moving to the new ECATS, would the past data still be available? Um, that depends. We have to see here um, what your current setup is. So um, Intrado has a, so the history behind ECATS and Intrado is ECATS was its own company. Intrado acquired ECATS back in 2014 or 13 or around that time frame, I want to say. And so with that, um, we, we merged all of our forces together. So before ECATS was acquired by Intrado, Intrado had a, a reporting suite available already to their customers. And the way that it's been handled moving forward is that's been slowly phased out um, as it's become quite antiquated and replaced with the more robust ECATS. So depending on how your data is being collected today would determine whether or not we would be able to have that data available. Um, if we have to make any major changes, we do have the option of a historical data import. Um, that is a separate um, cost than the standard offering, but worst case scenario, there is a way to make that data available to you so that you're not losing too much data. Um, typically, what, what I see people will do um, to avoid having to <clears throat> incur the whole historical process is to keep both going in tandem with each other. So while the ECATS is getting set up and getting deployed, keep your existing going as well. Um, and then over time, you, people will notice they'll slowly start transitioning over to using ECATS versus the previous. But if what you have today is configured and set up the way that ECATS is today, then you would keep that data from the start of time. So it, it depends on how you're currently configured today, whether you're old Intrado or old ECATS or old 
or Power 911. There's so many different versions of it um, as we're merging everything together. So we could definitely look into that though once you know, things get rolling. Or if you want to ping me after the call, I'm happy to take a look and have one of our tech support people look up your configuration today. Thank you, Jen. And uh, Bill asked, who is who will be doing the training? Train the trainer sessions at APCO Nina. And I guess uh, you know, a question I have is because I haven't seen the um, I've only seen drafts of the um, tariff amendment that Lumen is talking about filing to provide this, does that um, offering include any training or, or or is there any plan to provide training in the future? Yes, it does. <clears throat> so um, included with the setup of ECAS is the training. The training is done virtually, it is not in person. Um, and we have a team and it, it's, it's, it's entirely up to the project plan and how you direct us and guide us. Um, if you want us to start by a certain region or Eventually, if there's a list of order, okay, these 10 PSAPs are going to go cut over first, then these 10. But as each of them are cut over, we do offer the full training. We set up the training in a classroom, a virtual classroom setting. So they do like to have as many people in as possible. Um, they can set up an admin training versus a user, a standard user training as well. Um, and if anybody can't make the training, then we'll just do it again. Um, Cause again, you've got unlimited training included in that price. So there's no additional fee. Um, the only time um, a, a fee would be incurred is if you wanted somebody to go on site um, and then we can go ahead and price that out. But standard across the board, we usually do everything virtual through a screen share um, and it's like a classroom session, usually lasts about two hours. Very good. Um, and I don't know if what all um, Lumen has told you about our setup here, but we have an EZNet users group that represents all of the 911 authorities statewide. So if there are decisions to be made on how to configure the training, that would probably be the, the right place to make those, um, have those conversations and make those decisions. Okay. Hey, Daryl, uh, just, I'll, I'll jump in here real quick. This is Derek. Um, Daryl, um, Tiffany and I were the ones that presented to the state originally. So I'm, I'm familiar with that as net group. And um, if, if need be, if they need to do trainings in those kind of groupings, um, that's extremely possible. So the, the trainings are very, very flexible, as Jennifer said. Um, we can set it up and uh, to do it during certain times as a large group or individual piece apps or however, however you need it done. Train the trainer can be done as well. Very good. All right, and I, I see there's a couple of comments in here, but no more questions in the chat. Does anybody else have any questions they'd like to pose to our presenters today? It looks like there was one more question about 911 and non-emergency call stats being available when the system is statewide. Um, it, it would depend on how the, uh, the non-emergency stat um, call stats are coming through, but as long as they're coming off of the um, CPE and we're deployed that way, um, we can collect the non-emergency or administrative call data as well. And it's been a while since this meeting, but back in January, uh, when we were first talking about um, how this would be deployed in Colorado, uh, we were told that it would be deployed at the CPE level, so it would capture non-emergency calls. Uh, that was the way I understood it as well, Daryl, when we first presented it. Um, yeah. I would have to defer to, to Lumens and also Tiffany on that one, but um, she's uh, she, she actually had to jump to another call real quick. Um, but that is the way I understand it. We're going to deploy at um, at the um, at the CPE level, um, whether it's individual piece apps or hosted um, scenarios. We can do that. Sounds good. Anyone else? I did see Kathy had a second part to that question. Thank you for pulling that one out, Derek. She also um, wanted to ask if um, an agency had an agreement with ECAT already such as the 911 routing analysis module, is that part of the state system as well? Um, so the add-on modules, um, including the wireless routing analysis module was not included. Um, in the state system, we'll be um, including the MIS and text modules. However, if um, a, an agency was purchasing that and already had a separate agreement, or if an agency was interested in purchasing it, they're able to, it would just not be a part of this tariff amendment. It would be purchased directly from the PSAP. Thank you. 
And I see a, a similar question from Elaine. She says, so those of us who already have it, will it change much? And I'm going to guess that depends on what what modules you're already purchasing. Yeah, it depends on what you have. Yeah, it, ha it depends on what you have today. And um, I mean, if you've got the old Entrado Power 911, it's going to change drastically. It's night and day. It's so much better than um, the, the old Power 911 reporting module. Um, but if you were, if you are a customer of ECAT Direct today, um, it would be similar to that. So it, it really depends on what you currently have today um, deployed. And okay, perfect. Elaine, one one major difference is that um, you know, going forward, if this is part of the tariff and we are reimbursing everybody uh, through the state 911 surcharge, then um, you know one difference is you won't be having to pay for that out of your local emergency telephone charge anymore. Um, and Jackie Louise has her hand up. Jackie. Jackie, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Oh, and her hand's down again. And Elaine, to, to add on to that, um, you know, if you already have a contract for ECATS, um, you may need to see if there's a way that you can um, um, terminate that contract early. Sometimes there's a severability clause that will allow you to do that. Um, Obviously, you won't want to do that until we get ECAT set up through the state and through the um, through the tariff, so that you don't have a gap in your uh, in your data. Jackie asks, "How is the mapping of calls uh, available if the 911 routing module is not?" So the wireless routing module is different than the ad hoc mapping tool. Um, essentially, yes, both do plot calls and do map it. Um, the ad hoc mapping tool does not identify the cell phone tower, cell phone tower sector, um, as well as how those calls are being routed based on the jurisdiction in, in relation to that cell phone tower. Um, so that's the difference between the, the two modules, really. The ad hoc map mapping tool is going to allow you to see the calls on the map based on the fields that you select. Um, and just see the call data. You're not going to see the routing data. You're not going to see which tower it was sent to. Um, you're not going to be able to get information for routing sheets to be updated. So um, it's a, a scale, a much, much more scaled down version, but you're, you're not incorrect. You're actually right that you do get to view mapping of calls um, in both. Just the ad hoc mapping is solely going to uh, allow you to plot the calls and get the information from the calls, and that's it. And Trevor asks, has the language of the tariff already been finalized and approved? Um, I don't see Tim Kunkelman on the call today, but Tim Kunkelman is our, our regulatory contact for Lumen. And my understanding is they have approved it internally, but they have not filed it yet with the commission. Um, so it is not approved by the commission yet. Uh, and how that works is when a tariff amendment is filed with the commission, um, it automatically goes into effect in 14 days unless it is opposed by someone. So if somebody files an intervention, it might take longer before it's officially approved. Uh, but if nobody opposes it and nobody intervenes, then it will automatically go into effect. And um, Joe Benkert has his hand raised. He's probably going to correct something I just said. Joe, go ahead. Not at all. Just a, a quick question. For those who are already subscribing to a version of ECATS and have modules that are going to want to, want to retain, is, is that all that need to be coordinated before the transition happens so that they don't lose data, don't have gaps in data, if they want to continue certain modules? Um, um, this this you, is Darren, just, just to let you know, when you if you're already an existing customer, we've stored the data that's there. Um, for all call data that's there. And as you transition from um, one contract to a different contract, you're not going to lose the data. That's the important thing to note in that. And I think that was really the question. Um, so it, it, what may change is, is as Jennifer has stated and, and Daryl stated, there may be a difference in 
the modules that you have as far as uh, the, the overall view of what you're going to see and just what Jennifer has on the screen in front of her is going to look exactly the same as it did before. Um, the state's just going to reimburse you for the tariff of the, not, the MIS and the text to 911 if you currently have that today. As far as the additional modules, you can continue to, to, to have that in a contract with eCatch directly or however you have it set up. It, and that's the, the understanding that we have um, internally with our team as well. It was actually more of a sequencing. Is the current service going to stop and the, the new statewide service rolled out? And then people will, will have to come in and uh, over some time after the new for service starts, ordering, get in place the modules that they had and wanted to keep. Where will all that be um, uh, kind of coordinated so they don't lose the modules they want for any period? It, it would certainly be something we would coordinate with, um, with the um, project management team. Um, and it's really going to depend on what your current um, your current existing contract is. If it doesn't end until you know 2024 or something of that nature, um, then it's we will work with you to migrate the the that um, individual PSAPs and so forth that already have ECATS, uh, so that no data is lost in the middle and no no there's no you know there's not a stopping point there for you. Very good. Thank you, Derek. Um, anyone else? Any questions? Well, with that, I want to thank our presenters today. Oh, wait, uh, Matthew Towell says, uh, perhaps I missed this, but if we do not have ECATS currently at all, is there any action that is needed? Yeah, thanks for that question, Matthew. So once um, the uh, once the tariff has has been finalized um, and all the details and contracts have been finalized. Um, we're actually partnering with Lumen and we will work with them to develop a project plan and they're going to uh, they're going to uh, work with us in and also in that user group meeting of course figure out you know what what action needs to be taken um, at, at all. So once once that tariff has been finalized and we've got all the contracts and everything re, um, completed, you're more than welcome to reach out um, just to get ahead of the game. Um, and then, um, but we should be doing a reach out program to reaching out to each of the um, PSATs across the board with a, a rollout plan. But I, I always tell people, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out to us as well um, if you know that tariff's been completed so that we can, you know, squeaky grease what is it the squeaky wheel gets the grease type thing and if agencies do want to you know once the tariff has officially been approved um and lumen starts making its plans for implementation of the service across the state if there are agencies that want to reach out and coordinate um with questions like these would they be better off doing it through Lumen, or will there be ECATS representatives that are assigned to project manage this, or how will that work? Um, I'm, I'm honestly not 100% sure. We're going we're gonna to follow the guidance of Lumen, of course, um, because they are the, the primary uh, contract holder. So we'll follow the guidance of Lumen um, as far as that goes. And However, you know, we're flexible. So however, whatever, whichever way works best for you all and Lumen, of course, we'll, we'll go. But if somebody wants to reach out to us, ultimately that's going to happen. You'll be working directly with our operations group and our deployment team. Um, but I would say we're, oh, we would always yield to Lumen first. Um, and then Lumen would from then connect us with the contacts. But the, it, with these larger deployments, um, there's no there's no playbook that tells us exactly the right way to do it. What I've seen is, you know, we'll of course follow the guidance of Lumen, um, and then it, as once we get the go ahead, we'll work with the PSAPs directly because it is going to be a more um, personal conversation to get the training and deployment set up between us and the center. Excellent. Yeah. Nice well, you. hey, Derek, this is Russ. We'll certainly uh, work with them and and look at project managing this jointly. Perfect. And uh, Joe, you have your hand up again. 
Uh, yeah, some of these things that people are asking questions about seem like things that might be addressed in a tariff. Do you know if, if Lumen is planning to workshop the tariff before they file it so we don't have to have, you know, oppose it and have hearings or anything if, if we want to make, have things addressed in it that aren't? Uh, Wes, I see that you're on. Could you uh, help answer that one for us? You might know better than I. You definitely know better than I do. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll relay that question to Tim. Um, hey, Joe, I, I don't know if he was planning on that or not. Um, I think he was thinking it was pretty straightforward. But, you know, Daryl and Joe, we could certainly put that question over to Tim to see what he'd like to do there. So I just want to resolve this up front and that sort of thing to clear the air on anything that might be a question. I'll just tell you that what my understanding was is that he's circul circulated it at least once, I think maybe twice through the um, through the EZNet users group, right? And got feedback and incorporated that feedback um, into the the draft that he had. So my understanding was that he was not planning on doing any further than that, since he's already circulated it a couple of times and gotten feedback. Um, you know, I think if there is a desire to do that, um, he might be willing to look at it. That's up to that's up to um, Lumen if they want to. Do that kind of workshopping before they file it. Yeah, I didn't realize that he'd already circulated a draft. Um, yeah, I think my Daryl, I think it's been up twice. If I'm, I, I know at it. least once. I don't know. I think for some reason I'm thinking it was twice, but I know it was at least once because they got feedback from from Lita at least. But that went out through the um, EZNet users group a few months ago. Joe, I'll call you um, afterwards. Thank you. And there's also a timing issue. I think he was wanting to get it filed before uh, the commission makes a decision on the surcharge rate for 2023, uh, because this may affect what the, what the commission's decision is on that surcharge rate. Any other questions? Great. Well, Jen and Derek, and I don't know if Tiffany's still on or, or is back on, but Tiffany, if you're on, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate you doing this today. Uh, for everyone else, um, as soon as this recording is available online, I'll send out the link so you can share it internally. And um, if anybody has any other questions, if you want to get those to me, I will forward them on to the right people, uh, to Jen and Derek and, and the team over there. Thank you, Daryl. And, and um... Yeah, thank you, ECATS. I trust uh, everybody. That, uh, we appreciate that everybody's time this morning. I, I, I trust this has been helpful in addressing any questions and that sort of thing about the service itself. It, it is, it is robust, and uh, a valuable part of what our ASINet will become. Thanks, Terry. Right, thank you so much for having us. We're happy to to provide any information on ECATS. If anybody has any follow up questions, of course. Um, our contact information is there um, on the slide there. And once he emails out, of course, you'll have it all saved in the saved presentation. So um, thank you again for your time. I know everyone's time is precious. So I appreciate the hour. All right, everybody have a good afternoon. Thank you. Yeah.